Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a flip switch in CSS. This video was inspired by a blog post by Vincenzo Cianese, which is available at the URL shown here. Here's the end result we'll be creating. A flip switch is no more than a well-styled checkbox, so we'll use a checkbox as our starting point. This will render something like this. Now let's make it look nicer. First, we'll add some HTML to wrap the checkbox in a div and add some other stuff that we'll use later. Given that we're going to replace the checkbox with our implementation, the first thing to do is to hide the current one. Now let's give the switch some basic styles to understand what's going on. Notice that we use inline block instead of inline. The inline property value tells the selected element to just use the necessary space for the element. When the current element doesn't have any visible content, as in this case, an element set to display inline won't show even if we specify width and height properties. Inline block, on the other hand, will just use the necessary horizontal space, but inside the element it will behave as a block, regardless of content presence. Now let's style the switch switch element that will be our clickable button. This will make our switch appear with a circle that is going to be the part that moves in our component. Now for the hard part. Our aim is to move the circle left and right based on the checkbox state. The best way is to use right or left properties. We'll use absolute positioning and specify the top and left properties, and then we'll have the element fixed on the left. Now we want to move the circle when we change the checkbox. Thanks to the for attribute on top of the switch label element, Every click on that element will move the checkbox state from selected to unselected and vice versa. We want to move the circle a certain number of pixels and we can do that using the left property. Here's the CSS. Here's what this means. Take the switch switch element contained in a switch label element which must be next to a checked switch checkbox and move the left property in a chord. So now we have a moving button and it's setting the checked value in the right way. So now, here's the even harder part. In the first lines, we're saying the switch inner element will have double the parent's width, and so will overflow. Given that, we're equally distributing the width between the before and after part, and then we set up two different background colors. This will basically give us the two background colors that will slide between right and left, depending on the state. We're then setting the content to on and off. Furthermore, as you can see, we're using the margin left as moving property. Next, let's hide the overflowing part in order to display one part per time. The switch is now done, but it's ugly. To make it fancy, we'll add some animation for the properties we're moving when clicking the checkbox, namely margin and left. You'll notice that if you change the width of the flip switch, it breaks. This is because we decided to use absolute positioning within the switch. A partial solution to this is to use variables. If we change the hard-coded widths and replace the right expression in the check state with something like this, the switch will behave correctly for each width. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Vincenzo for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles and tutorials related to front-end web development.